Britain preachers got this scripture wrong and many, many other scriptures. And the scripture of which I'm speaking about is in Acts chapter 3. So I'm going to share with you the scripture and you're going to be honest with yourself. As a matter of fact, from time to time, as a matter of fact, every week, I'm going to share one of these scriptures with you and show you how the preachers and the theologians would have gotten this scripture wrong. And I will be interpreting the scripture to you psychologically and you will make sense of it for yourself. And also you will be putting it to work in your own life and proving it practically. Okay, so this is not theory, but this is practical exercise that will be given to you also. Now, many people would have heard preachers preach on this same subject in Acts chapter 3, and they would always speak of a man who is physically crippled and who need to be healed physically. But I want to say to you, you can only suffer two ways, either physically or psychologically. Therefore, if you would understand that a psychological fact can create a physical fact and a physical fact can create a psychological state, then you will understand why it is very important for you to understand the Bible from a psychological standpoint. The very first thing you need to know is that the Bible is not literal, neither is it secular history. You need to realize that the Bible addresses the human mind and must and should be interpreted psychologically. For the Bible has no reference to anyone who existed thousands of years ago or to any actual event that would have taken place on earth thousands of years ago. So from the beginning to the ending of the Bible, it's all a great psychological drama and it all has to do with the human psyche. It's all a great, great psychological drama. That is why no one can tell me of anything that was done in the Bible from the beginning to the ending. That wasn't for us a thought, or for us an idea, or for us imagine. As a matter of fact, you cannot write any book. And it wasn't for us a thought, or for us an idea, or for us imagine. It had to first be mental, it had to first be psychological. Okay, so everything is mind, everything is mental. And I'm going to show you that in this scripture, in Acts chapter 3, it is showing you that when you are financially crippled, and you can stand on your two feet financially. What can be done? Okay, so I'm going to read it to you from my Bible, which is the 66 books of magic. This Bible right here, the Overcomers Bible. And if you haven't gotten this Bible, as yet I'll definitely encourage you to get this Bible. This is the New Testament, and I have the Old Testament, and then two different books. Book one and book two, okay? Because Amazon can only print a certain amount of pages. So I'll definitely encourage you to get this treasure in your home and keep it forever. And in this Bible, there is no Jesus. There's a blank space for you to write your name, which is I am. For I am is the name of humanity. Okay. And you can never say I am and not referring to yourself. And I am is the name of God from generation to generation according to Exodus chapter 3 and Moses meant to be born and every one of us were, were born from our mother's womb and we have to ask ourselves who am I because that's the universal question of life and when the answer comes it must be I am I am that I am which means I am whatever I believe myself to be for as a man thinketh in his heart I his subconscious mind so is he so it doesn't give any preference or superiority to anyone when you read the Bible using your name, which is the name I am, and accepting that the Bible is your spiritual autobiography that must be interpreted psychologically. Also, when you read a Bible like this, it will free you from our mental slavery and free you from idolatry. Because when you read a Bible 
with Jesus and Jesus has been painted to you as a white man with blonde hair, blue eyes are painted to you as some Jewish man. It is to point you to look outside of yourself so you wouldn't look in the mirror and see the image of God. You see the image of someone else. All of that is idolatry. Okay, so here I'm going to read it for you and explain it. Okay, I'm going to read from verses 1 to verses 6 and then I'm going to break it down. Okay, he said, Now Peter and John went up into the temple at the hour of prayer being the ninth hour. And I want to let you know that Peter and John is speaking about love and faith. Okay, it is not two people. It is, they, their names are just personification that represents the human imagination, their states of mind, states of consciousness. So when you love yourself, you have self-love, and you are vibrating on the energy of love, and you're operating in faith, and faith is not something blind. Faith is a realization, is an understanding of you understanding your visible self and your invisible self, and you're working by law and order because everything is by law and order. As a matter of fact, there's certain laws that governs all of humanity, starting with the law of mentalism. So I would definitely uh, encourage you to check out those immutable laws that governs all of humanity, and that will help you to see the deception of secular Christianity that is pointing you to look outwardly. Now, verses 2 say, And a man, lame from his mother's womb, was carried. All of us came from our mother's womb being lame. We couldn't walk. And we came being dumb. We couldn't speak. And so, it is teaching you in life. You know I me, mean? those who are in need, financial need. Those who need to be healed financially and emotionally. Those who do not know who they are and do not know their power and do not know how to use their power. He said, whom they lay daily at the gate of the temple, which is called beautiful. When you speak about temple here, you got to know that your body is the temple and God dwells in the temple. God lives in the temple. That is why there is a visible you and an invisible you. Your visible body is the visible soul and your soul is the invisible body. God is the dreamer in you that doesn't sleep. Okay, so if you could accept that, then you will know that this story is all about humanity. It's not a, spec uh, a, a particular man of thousands of years ago it is speaking about. It is just playing out a psychological jammer. And you have to understand the psychological jammer by reading between the lines. He said, yeah, to, let me just go back here. And a certain man laying from his mother's womb was carried whom they lay daily at the gate of the temple, which is called beautiful, to ask arm of them that entered into the temple. So as I was saying to you, that some of us will be in a better state than others because there are infinite states of consciousness, infinite states of mind, and we can fall into any state. And many of us, we born from parents uh, who had a state, a mind of lack and mediocrity and so on. And that is what we would have also because our first teachers would definitely be our parents and we all born in a state of amnesia which is a state of forgetfulness that's why none of us can remember anything more when we're a month old or six months old or even 12 months old so when the bible says that we're born in sin and shaping iniquity sin is ignorance and so there's only one fundamental sin in this world and it's sin of not knowing who you are and we all are seeking to know who we are that is why, as I said earlier, the universal question of life would all be, who am I? And when the, question, and when the answer comes, it must always be, I am. <laughs> so you have to know yourself. And Peter, talking here about faith, okay? Fastening his eyes upon him with John, said, look on us. You see, you have to become very focused and concentrated upon love and faith. To operate your God power, to operate the creative power, to be able to understand that you are money and that money is energy and that everything is energy, vibration and frequency. And when you can use that power and understand how to use that power consciously, then instead of you giving someone a fish, you can definitely teach someone how to fish and put them to stand and their two feet financially whole. Okay, I'm getting ahead of myself, but it's very good for you to get it. Okay, 
He said, yeah, and he gave heed unto them, expecting to receive something of them. You see, many a times people are looking to us for material help. But what they need is psychological help. What they need is to tap into their source, that infinite source. Because if you seek first to know the kingdom and you discover the kingdom, there is a promise that when you discover the, the kingdom, that all these things will be added unto you because you will discover the creative power and you'll be able to use that creative power based on your own terms to have your every desire. Okay? So here it says, Then Peter said, Silver and gold have I none, but such has, but such as I have, give I thee. You can only give of what you are. That's what it is teaching you. You can only give of what you are, and you can only attract that which you are. It is not so much that which you desire that you attract, but it is what you have become. It is what you are that you would attract. Then he says here now, in the name of I am. You see, when you read my Bible, you see the difference. He said, in the name of I am, self-realization. In the knowledge of self-realization. In the knowledge of true redemption and salvation and self-realization is you discovering the kingdom. It is you discovering your consciousness and your awareness, your awareness of being. It is you understanding who you are you would tell others to rise up and walk because you discover that you are the Christ because you discover your Christ self and your Nazareth is your shining self. It's your dwelling place psychologically. That place of mind. So when it says here, I am Christ of Nazareth, rise up and walk. It is a psychological uh, secret that has been shown to you that when you discover your Christ self and you discover the dwelling place of your mind where you live and where you grow up psychologically and how everything is mental, how everything is psychological, how the mind controls the body, when you understand that, then you will be able to put one to stand on their feet financially whole because you will use that power on their behalf. So if someone asks of you, you can use your imagination on their behalf because they desire for you to use your imagination on their behalf. But they have to believe they have to look upon you. And when they look up on you, they have to believe that what you are saying, it is true. Because faith cometh by what? Hearing. And hearing by the word. And how can they hear without a messenger? And how can one bring a message unless he have, have had the experience? He must be a witness. So when the Bible says, how can they hear without a preacher? A preacher is actually a true messenger, not a man on the pulpit. So my brother and my sisters, you can lift up someone to a high place, a place of affluence by using your mind. Because why? It's a signal station. And we are, our brain is a transmitter and a receiver of frequency. And everything is energy, vibration, and frequency. And our thoughts are thought frequencies that is going out. Okay, and you're told that your word will not return unto you void, but it must accomplish that which you send it to and prosper anything where to you send it. And remember, a word is a thought expressed. So everything we, 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 we say and everything we do is an expression of a thought. And that is why you have to grab hold of your mind and understand how the mind works. And that is, that is what will help you to see where all these preachers would have gone wrong speaking of a man that is physically sick and need to be physically whole. And they misunderstand it. And if it was so, then these preachers and their followers should have been performing these physical things to shut down all of the pharmacies and the hospitals because they would have been proving 
the divine law of reproduction that every seed and every species must and with all reproduce after its own kind. They would have been proven that the life of this special, unique man of 2,000 years ago is within them. But I'm saying to you that that life is always within us. The creative life. The creative mind. But you have to tap in to the right side of your brain. Your genius CEO brain. Of which St. John, I think chapter 21, gives you the secret when said to throw the net on the right side. I think I did a video on that where I teach you the 153 frequency. That frequency of abundance. That frequency that will open up the gates of abundance to you. So my brother, my sisters, this is a man who was financially crippled. Many of you, you might be listening to me and you might be financially crippled. Okay, you can't stand any to feed financially. Right now, there's inflation. Right now, there's recession. Right now, everything has been affected through the pandemic. All of these things are there to distract you. But I'm saying that you have a power in you. And you can tap into that power and have your every desire and stand on your two feet financially whole if you would be willing to trust the process. If you would be willing to be disciplined and consistent to trust the process. So my brother, my sisters, I just want to encourage you. I just want to motivate you. And if you are someone who grew up with, you know, from a Christian, you know, background, with Christian belief, just like me. Okay, I'm saying to you, if you've been honest, you would realize that all oh, these preachers have been telling you that this was a man who was physically sick and he needed to be healed. And they give you the story as if it's someone who need healing and that Peter and John was two literal men of thousands of years ago and they didn't have gold and silver, they didn't have money. And they tried to use that for you to see virtue in poverty. But it is showing you that instead of getting someone to just to focus on matter, you know, getting them to focus on energy because energy is what will transmute into matter. So they be hiding the truth about alchemy. They be hiding the truth about the transmutation of energy, and they call it witchcraft. They call it all kind of name and stigmatize the power that you can use to achieve your every desire to continue to keep you in idolatry, to continue to keep you in mental slavery. So my brother, my sister, it's time for us to wake up and realize that the Bible is a book of mind science. It is time for us to be responsible for our thoughts and our action. It is time for us to understand that all of nature reflects riches and abundance. It reflects prosperity it doesn't reflect lack and scarcity so break all of those generational and family curse that you receive from your birth in terms of which family you born and grew up in you gotta break that shit and when you break it don't try to think that you'll be able to change them you know no start to do it now for for your children and your children children will continue it but you gotta break that shit Okay, because many people still going to the churches today to listen to the preachers speaking a lot of bullshit. Okay, and teaching you in a false way to make you believe that it is okay to live in poverty and to live in a lot and to live in mediocrity. No, poverty, po po poverty is a lack of imagination. Poverty is a curse. The Bible tells you that the, the rich rule it over the poor and the, the, the borrower is a slave to the lender. Many of our people have, have a create a, 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 a credit mentality. There's something you call a credit union. It's a union of creditors. They take your own money and make you come back and credit it. And they charge you interest. But my brother and my sisters, I'm saying to you, cultivate within you a, a money mindset a mindset of prosperity and abundance but most of all get to know who you are because when you understand that your real identity is your divinity that will give you power to give them back their Jesus and Mary story that was interpreted to you as secular history give them back their idol 
and learn to love and believe in yourself. I will never stop teaching that lie concerning that Jesus and Mary story because why I experienced the virgin birth, which is the birth from the skull. That is why I have an Amazon Prime, a, a lecture called The Secret Vagina, and I have the book here, but I have to do some work on it in terms of some correction, and I have a book before that. Okay, so I'm going to um, get that book that I would have done before called um, Spiritual Recipe for Prosperous Living. I'll have that published, and then I promise you, because I've been promising it for a lot, very long time, but I was very busy. Okay, I, I'm still busy, okay, but I'm going to get it done and bring that book for you, The Secret Vagina, The Secret Portal, and show you this thing, my brother and my sister. Time for us to wake up. So I can go on and on and on, but when I come to a close, I want to say to you, if this is the very first time that you listen to me, and what I'm saying, if it makes sense to you, if it re really resonates with you, and you're looking for next week for me to come with another one that the preachers have gotten wrong, because I'll be coming with them, okay, every week to you and show you them. And they're going to make a lot of sense to you. So let me say, if you haven't subscribed already, I'm definitely encouraging you to subscribe, to like, to comment, or to share this video. Also, if you like to follow me on Instagram, or you like to follow me on TikTok, you can definitely follow me at Black Mad Guru. Also, if you feel strongly led to support this work, I just want to remind you that we have a PayPal and the link is always down below. Also, you can support by allowing the ads to pay for at least 30 seconds. Okay? Also, let me say that you can be a part of our Patreon community and support this work continually as we work together for the advancement and the upliftment of all of humanity, whereby we are pointing each other one to look inwardly to discover that the real identity is actually there divinity. Also have a $20 course. It's called the Innocent Science and Technology to create your reality consciously. And let me say that I'm going to do more courses for just that same $20. That just that one $20, you get more courses. I'm going to do more courses. I have a little bit more time that I can do more, more. I'm going to do more. So once you're already there, you're going to get more courses. Okay. They're going to come. You're going to see them coming. I promise you that. Okay, so, yes, that 20 last course concerning the inner sun science and technology to create your reality fantasy. It's all about you understanding that when you see science and technology outwardly, it is because those who have uh, been the inventors uh, and, and who came up with those ideas because they would have tapped, in, tapped into their inward solar system, their inner sun their soul body, their light body, they were free thinkers, okay? And so when you tap into that inner light, that inner power, that is what will help you to realize that the Lord, the Lord thy God is a S-U-N, a sun, it's light, okay? And a shield and no good thing with you withhold from you because God is energy, vibration, and frequency. And you can see, whatever the sun shines upon, it brings forth bountifully. And the sun is what gives all of humanity its energy. No one can live without the sun. The sun is the giver of our life, and the sun is the light of the world, not an S-O-N. How could an S-O-N exist unless there first be the S-U-N? It's common sense. Wake up. It's time for us to get rid of Jesus' bullshit. So, my brother, my sisters, also, you're told, and um, when I speak about the Lord that God is a son, I'm quoting from Psalms 84, 11, okay? And Malachi chapter 4, verses 2, tells you also that the sun, the S-U-N, the light that is within you, one of these days is going to rise in you with healing in his wings. So, true healing and righteousness can only be found within you. So, righteousness is a realization, and true healing is a realization, so you got to heal yourself from all form of mental slavery by looking where? Inwardly. And get in touch with your light body, your inner body, the soul man. So if you feel strongly to listen to those videos, I'll definitely encourage you to do so. At this time, I just want to say peace. Love you all. I'm out.